This is Pastor Joe Lotus Steven. And I would like to uh, say this before we continue with the live broadcast. I attempted going online with my laptop, but after about 45 minutes, I, I, I discovered that uh, we captured only about a minute and 28 seconds of the live broadcast. Now, I'm using my phone, mobile phone, to, for this live broadcast. Um, the devil is a liar, and he doesn't want this broadcast out, but I am coming out live with this, because I believe that God wants every one of you to hear this message. i like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stand before your throne. I ask that you grant me utterance and that you will open the hearts of the people to receive what I have to say. I, I pray that your name alone will be glorified at the end of the day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, I would like to, to begin from 4 Samuel chapter 16. But before then, I need to give you a preamble. Um, of what took place before 4 Samuel chapter 16. Now, the people of Israel needed a king. I'm going to make this broadcast as brief as possible. They needed a king and they asked for a king. They requested from Samuel, we, get, we need a king. Give us a king. And this displeased Samuel. And Samuel went to the Lord and the Lord said, no problem, give them what they want. They've rejected me as king over them, not you. Now, the question is, who kept them all the way from Egypt? Who parted the Red Sea? Who sustained them for 40 years in the wilderness? It was Jehovah. But here they were. They wanted to be like the other kings, nations around them. <coughs> By the way, this is not coronavirus cough. Now. And they requested for a king. And God told Samuel, give them what they want. But then he warned them that they should be ready for the kind of king that will rule them. Now, Samuel, I mean, Saul, Saul was therefore anointed as king over Israel. And it came to pass that God gave an instruction, specific instruction. He said, go and destroy, utterly destroy the Amalekites. Kill. Nothing should be left alive. And everything should and must be destroyed. But then Saul returned. He returned not having fulfilled the instruction of God. He returned and speared Agak, the king of the Amalekites. And he kept the best of the sheep for what? Sacrifice unto God. And when Samuel confronted him, he said, no, it's not me. It, but the people, they kept for themselves the spoil to sacrifice unto God. And Samuel rebuked him. He said, God is not interested in all of these things. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hack him that the fats of rams. Now, Samuel went into mourning for Saul who had disobeyed God. And in verse 1 of chapter 16, the Bible says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, saying, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? In other words, it's very evident here that God had rejected Saul. And therefore, stop mourning for Saul. Stop mourning for Saul. Saul here represents we the pastors that have disappointed heaven. In this season, in this time... Those that God has called to prepare his sheep have disappointed God. 
and therefore we have been rejected now i am bold to say that we have been rejected of god why because we have not done what god has asked us to do god has called us as ministers of the gospel to prepare his ship but what have we been doing think about it what have we been doing just getting them to be rooted in this world and the world is passing away we have told them god wants to bless them god wants to increase them god wants to establish them in this earth forgetting that jesus gave his word in john 14 2 in my father's house are many mansions i'm going but i will return and take you to where i have prepared but we have caused the people of god to err thinking that it's all going to begin here and end here in other words build houses plant vineyards plant vineyards settle here forgetting the fact that god has his own agenda for the earth and for his kingdom and so people have focused here and the reason i'm saying that we the ministers of the gospel are the soul of our generation is because we have not prepared the people Forgetting the fact that God has a heavenly kingdom. And he has warned us that this world is passing away. He has warned us. And therefore he told us, he said, in 1 John chapter 2 verse 15, he said, love not the world or the things of the world. For if you love the world and the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. But check the average believer today. We have loved the things of the world. We are loving the things of the world. We are giving no room for heaven. And so we are taking root deep down. And suddenly we find ourselves in a situation where there is a lockdown. There is a lockdown, all right. And I dare to declare this, that the lockdown is approved by heaven. God is not the author of coronavirus. But he's allowing it doesn't matter where it's coming from, whether Wuhan or ha ha whom or wherever it is, God is allowing it and he's allowing it to lock us down. If we are not ready to listen to him, then we must listen to him by force. And that's what's happening right now. Check the children of Israel in the Old Testament. God will give them grace. They will abuse it. He will send them as captives. Uh, as captives. And when they repent, he will gather them back again. So God can use anything. He can use the Gentiles. He can use the, the armies of the against his people to cause them to sit up and to repent. And when they repent, he gathers them back again. And that's what's happening. He's using this lockdown to get our attention. But not only that. Is using the lockdown to create a level playground for everyone in the church, including the pastors. And that's the reason why the pastors are also on lockdown. They are sitting. We are all sitting down with the ship. Why? We, the ship are right. We are filled. And therefore, every one of us, from the least to the greatest, are on lockdown. Hallelujah. Little playground. So both the ministers and the ship, everyone sit at home. And it's an opportunity for us to seek the face of God. It's an opportunity for us to clean up our arguments, to reconnect with him. Now it's one on one, face to face with God, seated. No church, no nothing. The four walls of the church have been broken down. And now we are within the four walls of our habitation. It's a lockdown approved by heaven. And no one can pray away this lockdown. So we can't go and organize prayers. Lord, let the coronavirus stop. No, it's not going to stop, ladies and gentlemen, because we pray. 
If there's any prayer that should be prayed right now, it's a prayer of repentance, restitution, reconnection back to God. Repentance from the least to the greatest. Especially the pastors. We need to go on our knees and say, Lord, we have failed you. We come back to you. We are ready to preach your word. Look at what happened to Jonah. He got swallowed up. That's a lockdown for three days in the belly of the whale for Jonah. Until he repented and God released him. There's going to be a release for, of, of the coronavirus lockdown. But what happens after the release will determine whether God will set us apart, set us and push us away permanently or restore us. And I believe that we as pastors and ministers of the gospel, after this lockdown, we pick up our Bibles and we change our messages, there is going to be great rejoicing in heaven because then we would have reconnected with the real message. Not all the rubbish about prosperity. This has taken hold of the body of Christ for too long. So now God is locking us down, locking us down and causing us to sit down and listen to him. And he told Samuel, he said, look, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Hallelujah. Fill your horn with oil. This message is titled, There is Oil. For one more head. I don't know if you are that one more head. But my prayer is that you will be that one more head. There's oil available. And how can your head be anointed with this end time oil? Maximize this period. Seek the face of God. Reconnect back to God. Repent and tell God you are sorry. Lord, I'm sorry I've missed it. Lord, I'm sorry I've preached the wrong message to your people. Lord, I'm sorry as a sheep, I've encouraged my pastor to, to speak trash. Because that's what it is, trash. God took Rick Joyner to heaven several years ago. And told him, he said, when we, now Paul, he spoke with Paul. And Paul said, when we look down from heaven and listen to what you people are preaching, we are astounded. What are you guys preaching? In other words, we've been preaching rubbish. And Paul told Rick Joyner, he said, that's the reason why there's no power in the church. But when the church reconnects back with the true message, that is the message of the cross, then there will be a restoration of power. Hallelujah. So God is locking down everything so that we will reconnect back. To the true message of the cross. I'm talking about we pastors. But now both the pastors, they are all sitting down. We are all sitting down. We are now forced to sit down. The other day I saw one of the ministers, he's picking up the Bible and reading something that has to do with the end time. Now they are forced to, to preach about the end time. Why? They are saying that the people, they have, that they've been feeding with the wrong message are now open to the reality of the end times. And now he's coming to start talking about the end time. What we ought to have been speaking about last 10 years. Now they are picking up. My prayer is that after this lockdown, they will not go back and dust their Bibles and say, uh -huh, yes, let us continue from where we stopped. Listen. The world will never be the same again after this lockdown. Why? Time is up. Jesus is at the door. The Lord is allowed this lockdown. And it's an expression of his mercy towards us. But this is the best time for us to prepare. But what are some believers doing right now? Watching video games, playing video games, watching movies at this period. And that's the reason why there's going to be the five foolish virgins at the end of the day. 
instead of us to use this time maximize this opportunity make sure our lamps are filled with oil we are whiling away the time and waiting for the government of the earth to lift up the coffee this is a time to reconnect with heaven and then we will be among the five wise virgins hallelujah there is oil for one more head and therefore samuel went to the house of 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 jesse looking for that head and the father brought Eliab, the firstborn and samuel said yeah 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 this guy looks promising and god said no i have refused him for man see it not as man as god see it man look at on the outward appearance but god look it on the heart so god is looking and searching for the right heart and may you be the right heart hallelujah god is searching and looking for the right head may your head be the right head for the oil there is an end time oil and it's available and my prayer is that your head will be well positioned for this oil before now everybody wants to hear the good things the the, the blessing i see i i see a blessing come in your way i i see i see a promotion come in your way i see breakthrough come in your way and you're all shouting hey i receive it i receive it glory pastor preach it preach what i see double blessing double why don't you wait and position for double corona double blessing that's why the lockdown is in place because god himself had to intercept he had to step in to stop all the rubbish going on in the body of christ double what i have friends ladies and gentlemen friends we grew up with they have big churches but somehow what had crept among them look don't invite joe pastor joe don't invite him to your church because he's coming to rattle the boat he's coming to rattle the people he's coming to scare them with the, the story and, and the testimony and time uh, revelations of of heaven of hell and so on we have too much hellish experiences so so keep joe away but now they are listening isn't it now i'm reaching them the same people you are trying to protect they are listening to this broadcast because now they are forced to listen to it ladies and gentlemen time is absolutely up time is absolutely up in my other broadcast i did mention the lord lifting up the valleys the valleys are the messages the end time messages of righteousness, holiness, purity, heaven and hell, repentance and restitution. Now God is lifting it up, lifting it up. Everybody's now is, is, is opening their ears to hear. So God is elevating this message. And the message we have fed the people with. The prosperity and, and all of those stuff that have been elevated to the level of the mountains are now being lowered. And the one we've neglected are now being exalted. The rough places are being smoothened. The crooked places are being straightened. Why? The king of glory is on his way. And everything has to be sorted out before he returns. Thank God for the lockdown. Thank you, Lord, for this lockdown. Now it's face to face, one on one with the king. There is oil for one more head. And Samuel asked, are these all your sons? He said, no, there's still one. He's out there in the field. David. And God told, and, and Samuel, sorry, he told the father, I said, no one is going to do nothing, no sitting down until he arrives. They sent for him. He's, he was out there working. Glory to God. There are several ministers of the gospel out there like David, still serving, still seeking the face of God, still preaching the right gospel. He said, send for him. So there are remnants 
of true ministers of the gospel. Of course, he that to unrecognized. Send for him. Send for him. And David came. And the Bible says, and God said to Samuel, Hallelujah. And God sent for Samuel. Sorry. And Samuel sent for David. So he sent and brought him and and he he was ruddy. The Bible says with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. Why? For this is the one. Hallelujah. May you be the one. Anoint him, for this is the one. This is the one. Look here. He was ruddy. That speaks of his body. The Bible says he had bright eyes. That speaks of his soul. And good looking. That speaks of his spirit. This is a time the lockdown season is for us to make sure our body, soul, and spirit is in top shape for the oil. And the Lord says, Then Samuel took the, the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. The Spirit of God will come upon you as the oil comes upon you. This is time to set yourself apart for the oil. There is oil for one more head. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, the bottom line is this. The majority of the body of Christ, we are in a state of apostasy. We have missed it. The rapture is imminent. Jesus is coming, but he has to come for a prepared people. The lockdown is designed to give us room, very brief room to prepare because greater judgments are on the way we do not need to fear what is coming if we fully take advantage of this lockdown season we have nothing to fear because nothing that will come will move us the bible says it says once again i will shake the heavens and the earth the dry land and the sea and the things that can be shaken will be shaken and the things that cannot be shaken will be kept what we can secure at this period when the shaking begins or continues rather we remain hallelujah and the things that are not rooted at this moment will be swept away and that includes believers and pastors if we are not properly rooted at this time the coming shaking will sweep us away and it's going to be the most dangerous time for the unserious in the body of Christ. And at the same time, the most exciting time for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 60, it says, and, and gross darkness shall cover the people. There shall be darkness and gross darkness the people. But yet the, the light, my light shall rest upon the people. And my glory shall be seen upon them. Hallelujah. Now this speaks about the coming revival that's upon us. Now let me give you a rough idea of what to expect. No, somebody said the other time that the tribulation has begun. The tribulation has not begun. This is not the time for the RFID chip. This is not the time. The vaccine, of course, we should reject the vaccine. It's coming. There are earthquakes coming. There are great tsunamis coming mighty shakings coming also in other parts of the earth apart from the coronavirus now but then those that are rooted in the lord under the shadow of his wings we will be protected we will be shielded we have nothing to be afraid of and the glory of god will rest upon us why the whole world we see that we are still at peace in the midst of the storm just like Jesus Christ was sleeping in the boat while there was a storm out there in the sea. We will be at rest. And they will wonder, why are these ones not affected? Why are these ones not moved? Why are these ones still protected? And they will run to the cross. 
And that's when we will direct them to Jesus, the only place of security. That's the end time revival. It's going to be global. You see. Now, many will come to Christ during this period. Stadiums will be filled night after night with streams of, 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 of new births. People rushing to Christ. Great revivals. Miracles taking place here and there. And God is going to use the most, the least expected vessels. That's why I said in Joel 2, it shall come to pass in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, not the pastors. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, not the pastors that are not serious. So God, from this point onwards, is going to be moving away from the pastors. Now, get me right. That doesn't mean there will not be pastors. That doesn't mean there will not be church services. No. But what it simply means is that God will have moved from the Saul's to the David's. Hallelujah. There is a switch over taking place right now as we speak. For those that are getting themselves ready, they will be used by the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you are a housewife, house husband, or, or a bricklayer, or it doesn't matter your status. God is going to use you mightily in the coming revival. If only you will take advantage of this lockdown period. Very soon it's going to be lifted up. But then this is the, the, the defining moment. For the church and for those that will walk in the coming anointing. This is the time for the oil. Hallelujah. The time for the oil. Get ready for the oil. Because the Lord is about or is already releasing and pouring his oil upon the Davids of our time. My prayer is that you will sit up. You will sit up. Now take note. That God anointed David, poured the oil upon him. David used to play harp. He was a harpist. And Saul was still king, right? But then there came the distressing spirit upon Saul. God permitted it. And he called David. And as David would begin to, pour, to play his harp, Saul will find relief and be set free. What am I talking about? The David of our generation, right now in a place of hiding, in solitude. Thank God for the lockdown. It's providing a place of hiding for those people that will be used in the coming move of God. God is still going to use you. He's going to use you. He's going to use your skill. He's going to use your, your, your giftings. But the anointing is what will make the difference. Just like the anointing make the difference upon the, the plain skill of David. And the demon afflicting Saul was cast away. Each time he came, the anointing drove it out. Hallelujah. There is oil for one more head. I am bring, bringing this broadcast to a close. My prayer is that you will so position yourself at this moment for the oil. If you are a pastor, you are filled. That's not the end. Reconnect with God from this moment. Let your message change because time is absolutely up. I like to pray, first of all, for those of you that want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, bow your head and pray this prayer with me. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I believe you died for me. I ask that you forgive me all my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and, and this is very timely. God can still use you in this move. Begin to prepare. Get the Bible. Start reading. Read from, begin reading from the book of John in the New Testament. Now, so read the Bible. Talk to God in prayer. He's there by your side. And um, start talking to other people about Christ. Start preaching. I give my life to Christ immediately. 
soon after I began to preach. All I knew was John 3.16, but that was enough. I began to preach. Number four is church service. After the lockdown, locate a place of service and identify with them. But please locate a place that are preaching the right gospel. And then you will grow. Uh, those of you out there, you are you are a believer, you are born again, but 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 you have the, you 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 are disconnected. I want to reconnect you with God at this moment. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I confess that I have missed it. I confess that I've listened to the the wrong gospel. I've confessed also that I've allowed the world to creep in. And I have compromised with the world. But I come to you. I come back to you. And I ask that you forgive me. Restore unto me true fellowship with you. I renounce every hidden works of darkness. I renounce the world the love of the world right now and i receive a fresh oil upon my head help me to properly position my head my head for this oil in the name of jesus amen now if you are there i want to pray for you ministers say after me say lord jesus i come to you and i confess that I have fed your people with the wrong stuff over the years. I reconnect back to the true gospel. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for giving me a second chance to help your people that have misled. Dear Lord, I reconnect with you and I position myself for this oil. I believe I can still be used and will still be relevant for this last move so help me god in jesus name amen thanks everyone that is part of this broadcast thank you for staying with me and i look forward as the lord permits to the next broadcast god bless you see you later or in heaven shalom